Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Multifamily Mondays. It is Monday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we go live every single Monday for Multifamily Monday, talking about everything to do with multifamily real estate. Today, we are talking about build to rent communities, and we are talking about and answering three specific questions. Are build to rent communities a good investment? What are the drivers behind this big surge in build to rent communities, and do they actually make sense, whether or not they do? And then uh, what kind of premium built to rent is getting in today's marketplace? So let's get into uh, the subject for today, which is built to rent. And built to rent, I didn't know this, but built to rent is going to see $40 billion of investments funds uh, put into that sector in the next 18 months. $40 billion. So obviously it's something worth talking about. And that's exactly what we are doing today. So let me hop over to the whiteboard over here. So let me just, just write $40 billion uh, right here. So $40 billion. I feel like Dr. Evil when I say $40 billion. Okay, so we got $40 billion. So first of all, what's going on? Um, what is build to rent? Uh, before we can go into all the good stuff, just in case you're not sure. So basically, you know, you hear me talking on this channel a whole lot about uh, you know, value-add multifamily investment opportunities, right? So that's where we take an underperforming apartment building or apartment community, um, and uh, we do uh, some work to it, whether, whether it's uh, physical work or operational improvements. We fix it up, uh, you know, bring it up to standard, increase the rents, uh, make a better living experience for the tenants, and that's our business plan. Well, Build to Rent kind of takes the foundations of multifamily real estate and applies them to you know, purpose-built rental uh, houses, uh, typically they're uh, detached homes or you can ha also have townhomes. So and, um, so what, what we're doing is you're building out the product for the sole purpose of renting it out. So you know, uh, rather than having a 100 unit apartment building, you could actually build out 100 uh, you know, townhomes, 100 detached homes like that, and it's entire community. So you're building the entire neighborhood just for the purpose of renting it out, right? So obviously it's going to change how you approach the build. You're, you're actually adding uh, you know, cons construction opponents for longevity uh, of the actual materials. You're making sure it's durable and you're having the tenant in mind rather than a homeowner. So you make some minor tweaks along the way. And, um, and there's some really interesting stats uh, with build to rent. And I, I wrote them down here because there's no way I would remember all these different stats. So uh, the one that really stood out for me is there has been a 106% increase in the number of build to rent communities over last year. So if we look at 2021 uh, versus uh, 2022, we have a 106% increase. So obviously this sector is booming right now. And when we go back to the previous year, we had a 37% increase. And this has just been skyrocketing and rocking and rolling right now. This sector is absolutely exploding. So what's actually driving this explosive growth? Uh, there's two main things I want to highlight in today's video. So I need to grab my eraser here. Okay, so number one, I want to talk about the, the state of the housing market and what's really, um, and what's the impact it's having on homeowners homeowners and potential homeowners. So uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cite some US statistics here, but it's basically the, the same thing in Canada, if not worse in terms of affordability. So right now we are becoming a nation of renters. And what I mean by that is, you know, before you had like the American dream, the Canadian dream, uh, you know, you would, uh, you know, get a job, you would buy a house, you would have your white picket fence, you would uh, raise your family there, and uh, you would pay off that house over time. And then, you know, basically you die, you pass it on, or, you, or your kids sell the house. That, that's like the Canadian or the American dream. Well, that dream is changing. We are being, uh, we are uh, really shifting towards like a European mindset now. Uh, Europe is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ahead of us in terms of uh, development, right? Uh, Europe, Europe uh, ha has been uh, there forever. You know, I was just over in uh, England and Scotland. You know, you're looking at uh, buildings there that uh, predate the existence of Canada or the U.S. by hundreds of years, which is really cool. Uh, but uh, what what that means is, over in Europe, you have a lot more renters, right? Uh, home ownership, uh, land ownership, uh, is a lot more expensive and it's not accessible to everybody. And the same thing is happening here right now. So the U.S. average rents are up 10.9% over last year. 
right? So rents are going up and they have been going up for a very long time. And right now we have a very high cost of ownership. So home ownership, the cost of which is uh, is significantly increasing. That's being fueled by two things. So the first thing that's fueling that is uh, debt, right? Uh, we've all heard about all the uh, interest rate increases. Uh, that's going to impact variable rate mortgages, bonds uh, as well that impact um you know, uh, fixed uh, term mortgages, whether you're in Canada or the US, uh, you know, slightly different mortgage structures, but generally speaking, it's becoming a whole lot more expensive to borrow money to buy a house. And then qualification uh, becomes a whole nother issue because what's happened now is we have inflation eating away uh, earnings, right? Right now, if you have money saved up in the bank, and uh, you're planning on buying a house for yourself to become a homeowner, um, you know, you're, you just lost 11% of your money. So if you had $100,000, you just lost $11,000 just to inflation sitting in the bank. So your purchasing power with your dollar is steadily decreasing and inflation isn't going away anytime soon. You know, the, the central banks are uh, putting all the stops into place and it's not really doing too, too much right now. And, and also we have uh, debts, uh, the, the cost of current debts is going up too, and that's going to limit uh, disposable income that people then can put into buying a house. So that, that's what's really uh, driving a lot of potential homeowners over to renting, right? Uh, you, you can rent a place, you need your deposits, uh, and that's going to vary depending on where you are. But generally speaking, you have your first month's deposit, your last month's deposit, maybe a damaged deposit, um, but that's all you need. You don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars just to enter the housing market. So people are becoming uh, renters, um, often by necessity, not by choice, um, which, uh, which is a big driving factor right now in terms of the tenant pool. And that's putting upwards pressure on rents um, you know, inflation is putting upwards pressure on rents, but also the, the demand for renters. And every time, you know, it's really interesting. Um, you know, last week in my live stream, I talked about uh, the upcoming or current recession, depending on who you listen to. And, uh, you know, during recessions, uh, you know, the number of tenants, uh, the tenant pool grows, right? Because less people um, purchase homes, uh, more people are selling their homes uh, due to circumstances and, and they become renters. So when you actually own the rental property, uh, whether it's an apartment building, you know, built to rent community, whatever it is, uh, your pool of potential customers uh, grows. Uh, so recessions aren't too bad as long as you own the real estate. So that, that's number one, right? We're, we are becoming a nation of renters. But I have some interesting stats now I want to share with you about a very interesting age group that I happen to be a part of. Um, and this is a big demographic uh, driver right now in terms of built to rent. So it all comes down to demographics, right? So right now in the build to rent um, space, uh, tenant, the tenant profile really comes down to two different things, right? It's couples and couples with families. So you got, you know, uh, a couple, you know, on their own, probably a furry pet of some sort, because that seems to be the trend. Uh, my fiance is on me all the time to add a furry friend to our family. And then we have couples with families. Uh, so one kid, two kids, um, you know, wh wh whatever, whatever it is. They may, th those two uh, types of uh, groups uh, make up the bulk of uh, build to rent communities. They're tenant based. And who who is making up the bulk of this people? I, I kind of teased it before. It's people in my age group. It is millennials. So and millennials are age 26. Right now, I had to look this up, right? It's 26 to 41 right now. And I fall kind of smack dab in the in the middle of that. Now, the interesting thing is there are a whole lot of millennials out there. There are 72 million 72 million millennials and they are in that uh, 26 to 41 age group with a median age of 33 years old now this is significant right because we've seen that uh millennials were delaying having children right um you know that that's being really pushed back millennials were really focused on their career they want to live the lifestyle but now they're at that age of 33 and there's something that happens if you haven't had um, a child by age of 33, um, there's a biological clock that really starts ticking pretty strongly somewhere around this age, right? Because because uh, for uh, you know your your child uh, bearing uh, years are uh, shrinking pretty fast at this point. So millennials are starting to have kids now. They delayed it, but now it's baby making time. So what's going to happen when these millennials who were uh, a little bit more transient, they were single, they were living in apartments. What happens when these millennials start having kids? 
right? They want to change their living lifestyle. They don't want to live in an apartment anymore. They want to start living in a house, right? That, that's what they grew up in. They were used to living in a house. Well, we just found out that home ownership isn't possible anymore for a whole lot of people, but they still want that living experience for their families, right? They are couples or they are couples with children. So millennials want to recreate that housing, um, that housing environment that they grew up in when homeownership was a little bit different, but they can't do that through actually owning the house right now, They, but they can do that through renting the house. So this is what is really driving that build to rent sector. It's, it's millennials, getting together, having babies now, they're making babies, that's the fun part. And now they need to find a place to live to raise their family and they are shifting to build to rent. Now, there's a couple of reasons why that is, right? So millennials, they're now established in their professions. You know, at the uh, at the, the later bracket of millennials, age 41, they're starting their 40s. They're very established in their, in their careers. They have income, even though it's being inflated away uh, with, with everything going on, they still have, good income, right? So they can afford a nice place. They may just not be able to afford actually entering the housing market with uh, with the financing and the capital requirements to buy their first house. But they actually want a nice space. They don't want to live in a cubicle anymore. That was okay when they were younger, but now millennials actually want a nice yard. They want, you know, a fence. Uh, you know, if they have a dog and children, they want, uh, you know, them to be able to run around and do all that kind of house stuff. Like I'm in the same situation, right? Uh, you know, my fiance and I were getting married and, uh, you know, it's, it's house hunting together, right? Like, um, you know, that, that's, that's one of the things that's going to happen uh, because we f find ourselves in that age bracket. And here's an interesting thing too about furry pets. About 70% of this demographic is going to have a pet. And if you know one thing about apartment buildings, uh, some apartment buildings, uh, you know, they're pet friendly, others are not. Living beside somebody in an apartment unit with a dog that's barking at all hours of the evening, you know, that's not something that's very appealing. So if you can actually take that renter lifestyle, right, so that that, that renter, take them from an apartment building and put them into uh, more of a traditional home, uh, you know, that they're still getting all the benefits of the yard, you know, their, their own place, it feels like a home, but they're renting instead of actually purchasing it. And this is where build to rent comes in. Now, the premium that these millennials are willing to pay is actually quite interesting. So millennials are willing to pay a 10 to 20% rent premium for all the benefits that a traditional home provides, right? So they're willing to pay 10 to 20% more for the same product, as long as it's uh, it's giving them that that home feel, right? With the white picket fence, you know, their own thing, whether it's a townhome, uh, whether it's a detached home, they're paying for this stuff because this is what they want. They are established in their careers. They're making babies now. They have pets. They want to have that home that they grew up in. So this is a big, a huge uh, demographic push right now. And this is why we're seeing rent to own absolutely explode because we have the numbers right here, the age bracket, this is what's really pushing and driving the explosive growth in rent to own. And uh, when you look, you know, demograph demographic shifts, demographic changes, that those are one of the seven key market drivers I look at when I'm analyzing real estate markets. And you can't dismiss this huge group of people making life uh, life changing or 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 life-based decisions because they're making babies now, their median age is 33 and that clock is ticking and they only have so many years to do it and they want to live in a home that's going to support that family and move out of their more like transient, you know, single lifestyle where they were hopping from apartment to apartment. So that is huge. So I, I wanted to share with you the top three build to rent communities right now or the cities where build to rent is absolutely exploding. So the top uh, three build to rent markets, and I'll just say BTR, it's uh, a lot easier to do. So the top three. So uh, let's start with, uh, I'll, I'll give you two honorable mentions, right? So we've got Riverside, California, and then we've got Houston. So this was number five, and this is number four. So number three, the top, uh, the, the third best uh, built to rent market in terms of volume of um, homes under construction, we have Columbus, Ohio, and that has 4,800 give or take uh, homes under construction. Then we have Dallas, Texas, and Dallas has 4,300 homes under construction. And then we've got Phoenix, 
Oh, I, I think I mixed up Dallas and Columbus. That's my bad. And then we've got Phoenix, Arizona, 6,500 units under construction. And, uh, you know, Arizona right now is on fire. It's just exploding uh, with uh, build, to, um, build to rent. And uh, I'm actually working on something right now um, in Tucson, uh, which uh, has a lot of uh, different drivers in Phoenix. So really interested to, to talk about that. And if we're able to have August on, uh, we'll get into that kind of stuff. So uh, huge markets right now, like built to rent is absolutely exploding. And like I said, is really being driven uh, by that millennial demographic shift where they're changing their lifestyle and getting more into that uh, traditional family unit, so to speak. Hey, thanks for watching. I've got two other great clips for you to watch right over here. And let me know what you think. Leave a comment, hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, happy investing.